Thank you all for joining us. I am Stacey Kazinchuk, Genev's Director of Health Coaching. I'm a registered dietitian exercise physiologist and very excited to have Stephanie O'Dell here today from Celebrate the Gray. Um, and as you saw probably from the information when you signed up, we're going to be talking about fashion and dressing for aging. So Stephanie, thank you for joining us and um, go ahead and introduce yourself to our audience and let us know your background and what it is you do now. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to talk about this topic. Um, as a 58-year-old woman, I, I know that we start to feel old, and we, it doesn't help that um, a lot of brands don't recognize or show us in their advertising. So I have been a stylist for 10 years. I started with Athleta, and worked there for five years, worked for Stitch Fix, which is an online styling site. For three years and I've had my own business for over 10 years of styling. So I've styled over 6,000 women, um, everything from 13 to 90. Um, so really understand all women are alike in the sense that they think they have flaws that they think everybody else is noticing and, and looking at. And really you're looking at your own flaws and really um, more aware of those than anybody else. So about five years ago, I started a blog called Celebrate the Gray to find out if there was a need for a fashion line for the over 50 year old woman because a number of my clients were saying to me, we can't find fashion, the fashion industry has forgotten us. And what I really found out through talking to over 100 women was that it wasn't so much the fashion wasn't there, it was the imagery that we're given as we age um, is not inclusive of women over 50. So we don't see ourselves in stores when we walk in in the the at or the the print or in the mannequins or even in the um, sales people in the stores and so we don't feel like we belong there so what i really found that i wanted to do was consult with companies to start using real faces and authentic stories about positive aging so that women in their 50s could start aging with power and not fear and not hanging on to our 20 and 30 something selves, but really being inspired by women that are in their 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s that are living these full and vibrant lives. Um, menopause and midlife throws a huge upset in our worlds as we age. And one of those things that happens is our bodies change. And so I find that a lot of my clients start dressing to hide and also start dressing in oversized clothing. And a lot of that comes from because they don't understand their shape anymore. And so instead of, and they, they hold on to, well, when I lose 20 pounds, when I lose 30 pounds, then I'll go buy new clothes. And in the meantime, life's going on and you're missing out on being vibrant and involved and visible in the world. So I'm super passionate about women just understanding what their shape is and learning how to dress it um, so that they can live with more joy. I think that the, the image we project to the outside world really dictates how we feel on the inside too. So that is my story. I'm gonna give myself a little bit more light. I think I'm sitting in the dark. No problem. Thank you so much, <laughs> Stephanie. You brought up a lot of great things that I hear, um, or a lot of things that you're absolutely right and you see it in your clients and I hear that in mine when I'm working um, with our health fix clients their concerns around their body shape and their body shape and size changing in menopause, which is a normal part of aging and menopause. But when our society and our culture does not welcome that or does not show that that is normal, it is common for women to see messaging that they should be able to shrink or go back to right. who they were 20, 30, in their 20s and 30s. Um, and I think as, as you mentioned too, it, it's always that when I lose weight, then I'll buy new clothes versus the here's my body now today. How can I celebrate who I am and seek the clothes that I can still feel good in um, around that? So I really appreciate your perspective and your work in changing the conversation and helping women to hear that. I think the other thing too about um, women is we have these stories in our heads and they come from childhood and many of my clients will say, you know, it might be their breasts. They got teased as a kid because they de developed early. So they hide that part of their body. Um, and it's these stories in our head. And then 
on top of that, you have these visuals that you're given as you age that you're not good enough if you don't look like you're were 20 or 30. So it's this very hard thing to overcome. Mm -hmm. You either have to have very strong role models in your life um, or do a really good job of finding people that are celebrating and aging with power, but it's difficult. It's really difficult. Um, and then we get into this friendship shame almost that friends can shame you of, um, you know, maybe dyeing your hair and why don't you dye your hair? Your hair is gray. You look so old. Mm -hmm. Like women do this to each other on a constant basis versus I believe if the imagery we saw was one of modern and positive with gray hair, we would start to think about aging differently and be more um, proactive about aging versus reactive to aging. Yeah, that's such a good point. Again, that, that messaging and all the different avenues that it comes in. There's the yeah. friend connections, there's the family, there's the history growing up, and then there is um, what we see in media um, or when we're shopping online and so forth. Um, with that, what in your work that you do, what do you see the role of clothing playing to support women during this aging process? What's that connection there? Well, the first thing that you, clothing presents to the outside world who you are, how you feel about yourself. You know, it might be what kind of job do you want? What kind of relationships do you want? It's really dictated by your clothes. I used to do customer service training. I used to tell people, if the if a rest if you drive up to a restaurant and it's got weeds in the parking lot and the windows cracked, what do you think the food is like inside? So it's really the first impression someone has of you. Um, and we try to say, oh well, it doesn't matter. You know, clothes shouldn't matter, but they really do. It's that first impression mm -hmm. of how you move through the world. Um, and it, and feeling good in your clothes gives you if you're comfortable and you feel good in your clothes, it gives you this confidence that can be a catalyst for change or just to be um, feel good about your life and where you're at. Um, just, it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, that's, a, and I like how you mentioned the feeling good in your clothes. I see that also contributing to women feeling good in their body. And during menopause, there sometimes is this almost outer body experience that women share of, I see myself through a curtain, but there, but who I am doesn't align up with who I was before and it doesn't feel right. I don't feel like myself and my body. Um, do you see with the work that you're doing, especially women during menopause, does that adding the feeling good in your clothing, does that help them to feel better in their body? Oh, definitely. Um, I think it, it's either an external or internal um, catalyst for change that you may be stuck in this, um, who am I now? I, you know, I know a lot of people in midlife, women especially have raised kids or they've had a full-time career and they've decided to make some changes. Um, they may have parents that are, are going through some health issues, but menopause is a big part of, of that. And you, it's this time of you can settle into who you are and kind of start to disappear. And I feel, I've sent, I really feel, hear this from 80 year old and older, 70, 80, that they do dress to disappear. So it starts in midlife when you're not 100% comfortable in your body. Um, and just small little changes can make a huge difference. I have clients that dress totally in black and I always do research before and looked at her Facebook page and looked at different things and, and she had a picture of her skydiving and driving a convertible and I went, whoa, wait a minute, this doesn't match who you are. And, she, and, and it came down to, um, well, at work, I'm older and I don't feel as relevant. Mm -hmm. um, so all of a sudden when you start to introduce color and more modern cuts of, and fabrics, and then you start to get positive feedback, it's like, oh, I can own this. I can be comfortable in this. Mm -hmm. And it's this small little baby steps with clothes for sure, because a lot of times people get overwhelmed with, well, I can't wear that. Okay, well, you can't wear that, but could you introduce a color bracelet or a color shoe or, you know, I'm a big uh, proponent of small steps equal great change. Mm -hmm. So, um, and the menopausal body is, um, I remember working at Athleta and stripping off jackets and then being freezing and putting back on the jacket. So it was always about layering mm -hmm. and having sleeveless, having fabrics that wick, you know, that work so that you're not feeling uncomfortable. It goes back to that when you're comfortable, you're confident. And yes. that's a whole different um, person you put out in the world. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, if you're in a, in something that's not comfortable and you're worried that it, what's going to happen if I get a hot flash in this moment, um, yeah. how am I going to handle that? That that can certainly just occupy your mind and not um, allow you to really be true to who you are. Yes. What uh, do you see any other challenges that women face during menopause around clothing, fashion, um, and dressing, other than the the layer approach and the the disappearing that you mentioned? Well, I think society tells us what we can and can't do. I mean, we're we're told. Uh, many of my clients will say, "Well, I'm 50. I can't wear that anymore." Mm. I'll say, "Well, wait. How do you feel in it?" Well, I feel great. I love this outfit, but I can't wear a short skirt. And I'm, I said, but if you feel comfortable and confident, then you should wear it. No one's telling you. It's this, this imagery that um, we have in our head of certain ages. Someone will say to me, oh, you look great for 58. I'm a, and I'll always say, well, what picture are you looking at to tell me I look great? Mm -hmm. That our, our imagery and our visuals are outdated. We're living longer. We're living healthier. Our 80-year-olds don't look like our grandparents' 80-year-olds. Right. They're hiking, they're active, they're, why shouldn't they be able to wear modern, comfortable clothing um, and have options? Yeah, no, that's um, that comparison piece of, again, that story, that story in our head that we tell ourselves, this is what a 50-year-old looks like, this is what a 30-year-old looks like, and how do we compare those things? Um, it can be a slippery slope um, for a lot of people. Um, I also, you mentioned, um, I've had clients too, I have one client that I'm thinking of in particular, and she um, had told me at one point, she, she had said, you know, I've never... I just have never thought that I could wear tights or leggings. Like I see people wearing them in bar class and I see people walking around and I just thought that could never be me. And then I saw this person wearing these really funky, um, they had animal prints all over them, these tights. And she's like, I just wanted them and I bought them and I just look forward to wearing them. Like I was so excited. I just feel so good in them. And so there's something to be said in terms of, when something feels good or excites you about what you're putting on, the yes. power that that has. Yes. Um, I think the risk, you know, sometimes it's that taking that small little step back to that point and, and then you get confident or you get some um, recognition like, oh, you look great. What did you do? You know, and it may just be you have a color t-shirt on, you always wear white. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you think, oh, it, it's, and I have to say color, it, it's like walking out into a spring day versus a winter day. Mm -hmm. Think about the feeling you have when you walk out and it's a spring, beautiful day and the greens are vibrant and the pinks. And you have to find your colors that work for you um, and how you want to in incorporate them. Back to the other part is, um, you know, our lifestyles have changed. And especially with COVID now, people's lifestyles have definitely changed. And one of the big hurdles is, does your style match your lifestyle? Mm. And trying to fit your clothing into your lifestyle you know, you maybe were a stay-at-home mom or your kids have left for college and all of a sudden all you have is yoga pants and t-shirts and you really want to modernize your look. You know, that's, there. there's, um, I, I always talk about understanding your shape, but also understanding does your style match your lifestyle anymore? Mm -hmm. And are you stuck as you were in your image of your body? Are you stuck in the lifestyle and your lifestyle has changed? Or your style maybe has changed, you know, maybe you were conservative and now all of a sudden uh, you're not, you know, you want to be a little bit more adventurous. So does your wardrobe match that? Yeah, that's um, so many pieces to take into account. The lifestyle piece is also key, um, especially as you're, you are thinking where most of us are staying home. Um, do you, are you finding with any of your clients right now that they're, because they're not going, maybe they're not being seen as much, their desire to embrace their clothes has changed or their feeling towards how they're dressing? Has that changed at all with being home more? I think people are um, more comfortable in their clothing. You know, it's that the shirt sales have gone up, I think 80% <laughs> or something and pants sales are not, are non-existent. So yeah. people are looking, but I think it's also teaching people the importance of color. Mm -hmm. um, the importance of opening up. I mean, you're wearing a great example of opening up and drawing all the attention up to your face. Um, I mean, we can Thank start you. <laughs> about that a little bit about understanding your shape. Uh, mm -hmm. And as we age, your shape doesn't change that much. I mean, some people become more of an apple mm -hmm. and maybe they were an hourglass. They may fill out in the belly area a little bit more. 
but it's understanding how to balance that shape. And once you understand how to balance and how to dress your shape, you're going to save money shopping, you're going to save time shopping, and you're going to feel better because you're going to understand how to conceal and reveal those parts, conceal the parts you may not love, and then reveal the parts that you want other people to see. That's, I love that those points there. Um, and I think especially women in menopause that are experiencing changes in their body shape. Uh, like you said, some women, um, it's more just a redistribution of their weight rather than um, a, a large amount of weight gain. Um, they just notice more weight in their abdomen or things, um, their back, they might notice more fat in their back and they're thinking, wait a sec, where did this come from? I haven't changed anything other than obviously the hormones changing with menopause. So let's dive into that in terms of your recommendation um, for women in larger bodies that are feeling self-conscious about that. What are your recommendations and some of the things you mentioned, balancing shape um, with, with their clothing? So first, you need to understand what your shape is, and it's a super easy um, thing to do. You get a tape measure, um, and you measure your shoulders, which is around the shoulders, around your bust, around the narrowest part of your waist, um, your natural waist, and then your widest part of your hips. So four measurements, shoulders, bust, waist, and hips. And then you, from those measurements, um, you can figure out, am I an apple? So do you hold, or an inverted triangle? Both are the same, basically the same. Do you hold, are you widest up top and narrower down? And a lot of people through menopause, that's kind of what happens. Mm -hmm. They have great legs, they have a, a narrower waist, um, or are you a triangle or a pair? So your wider hips, your narrower shoulders, or a rectangle that you're pretty much the same all the way down. Mm -hmm. And then an hourglass. So hourglass is the ideal shape. Um, it's balance. So when we talk about balancing your body, you're trying to achieve the hourglass. So let's just go with the apple and the inverted triangle because that's, I would say a lot of people fall into that. Um, first and foremost is great uh, or, or good undergarments. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that happens is our breasts start to fall a bit so making sure those girls are up and where they're supposed to be so that you are you do have a waistline um and then learning how to balance so you're heavier on top you want to open up um i let me see if i can pull up some pictures um that kind of illustrate yeah um and you're gonna stacy you're gonna have to walk me through this i may lose that's okay. Once you're, once you have your images, you'll go um, down to the Zoom, um, the bottom of the Zoom screen, and then just select share your screen. Okay. And then you should be able to select the screen you want to show. Okay. Are we there? Yes. So I can see um, there's someone in a skirt and a long white shirt, and then there's a black skirt. I'm going to get it a little bigger. Okay. There you go. Yep. So playing with proportions. Um, one of the things that works for every body shape um, is the V. So you notice the V, and that's what I was saying to you. You've opened up your neckline and drawn attention up to your face. And with color, even more so. You're pulling people's attention to your face which is the part of your body that you should always highlight. It's got your smile, it's got your beautiful eyes. I mean, that's where you should be highlighting your body. Um, and color, the thing about color is it, it's like wearing makeup. If you've not worn makeup a lot, it's like wearing makeup. And you can see the other big part for all body types is the waistline, defining a waist. So if you're an inverted triangle, a V opening up, and then creating a waistline. You might create, a, if you don't have a true waistline, maybe it's with ruching, maybe it's with a wrap dress. Let's go to the next. So again, you can see proportions, how huge mm. proportions pet play. And this is what I was saying about menopausal women. A lot of times I'll just wear bigger clothes. They're more comfortable on me and that'll be fine. But look at the difference. She loses literally 10 pounds when she wears clothes that actually fit her she opens up her neckline. She draws attention up to her face. She, the shirt or jacket should hit above or below the widest part of your hips. Mm. So that if it hits, if that red line hit right at the widest part of her hips, she's drawing attention to the widest part of her body. But if it's above, 
then it's not. Um, and then here's some, some gals that did a great job of opening up, defining a waistline, and having color. I know a lot of gals don't like to show their arms. So having a little sleeve, this is an, a nice little knitted sleeve that looks great on this gal. You know, you may be adding a cami if it's too low. Mm -hmm. um, the color, you know, layering this blue sweater and the necklace. You don't have to necessarily do it with a neckline. You could do it with a necklace, adding a color yeah. necklace. You can see the gal in the blue has added a long necklace, but the blue also brings our eyes down so okay. that it, it draws your eyes down the body. Um, and then here's another, this is one of my client, her, and she wanted to be funky and modern. And she was, so this is what we did. We, again, you see the V, you see some interest. Um, sometimes people get caught up, oh, I can't belt. You know, the belt on her is a little higher. Mm -hmm. And she's an hourglass apple. She's, but she can fall into apple, but when she belts, all of a sudden she's more of an hourglass. So by wearing oversized clothes, you may, again, add more um, weight to you than you're thinking. Now, this is a, a mistake. So can you spot the mistake in this? Does anything kind of be like, oh, um, what happens to your eye when you look at this? I'm wondering, is it the, um, the silver circle in between her boobs there, that's, that draws my attention, but I don't know if that's also my visual yeah. line. Well, no, it, that's true. And both of those things, it's confusing to the eye. So if mm -hmm. you put your, if you take away the necklace, all of a sudden it's, it's much more pleasing to the eye or you took away the um, silver and they, uh -huh. or even colored it black. You could okay. take it a Sharpie and color it black, but the eye gets confused of where to look. Mm -hmm. So if the necklace was the focal point, then I'm looking at her face. Otherwise, I'm looking at her boobs. Got it. Yes. Yeah. There's a con there's a conflict there. Yeah. So again, here you can see this gal V defining the waist, and these two gals. Um, there's a great show called Queer Eye that these guys. There's five guys that dress women, and these gals are large gals, um, and they were dressing in big t-shirts. And he put them in modern sunglasses and more modern, you know, jeans, and they look fantastic. And they, they, the energy that changed within them when they, all of a sudden they had more modern, styling, stylish clothing on was phenomenal. Uh, and it's, again, goes back to this catalyst of change that when we think when we're a larger gal, we think we can't look modern, we can't look um, great in our clothes, when in fact, you definitely can. Um, let's, and then, so that's a kind of about the shape. Again, it's all about balance. It's about uh, de defining a waist and balancing your shoulders and your hips. So if I'm an inverted triangle, I may wear a solid color on the top and I might wear a print on the bottom because I want to draw some attention to the bottom. Also apples and inverted triangles have usually have great legs, like show your legs, you know, <laughs> that, that is a great place to show your asset. Um, and then by wearing a darker color on top, you're reveal or you're concealing maybe that you're larger on top and it will start to balance you, you know, a rectangle, the same thing. You may have to add some volume up top that may be with, um, a puff sleeve or ruffles on the sleeve or a wider opening to, that goes out to the shoulders. So you emphasize the shoulders a little bit more and then wearing a color or wearing a print on the bottom and then ruching or something to actually define a waist. I'm a rectangle, so I always wear Vs um, okay. and I always play up the top, but I can wear color. I can wear print on the bottom because of that. Um, the hourglass, you just want to make sure that you're balanced. The um, pair or triangle, you want to draw attention to the top part of your body. So you want color, you want print, you want pattern, and you want dark and solid on the bottom so that you balance those two. Excellent. Does that make sense? Yeah, it's a, it seems like it's a game. It's that balancing game, like you said, and drawing attention to the areas that are highlights or things that you want to be seen. Yes, but the V, the trick, the V trick in the waist works for every shape. 
Okay. It, it really is the most powerful thing you can do to trick the eye. Uh, it's drawing attention up and it's defining a waist. Uh, so that really for any shape, mm -hmm. if you're wearing high necked shirts and you're not showing your waist, start trying to playing around with it and you'll start to notice, oh, I look leaner, I look taller, I look um, happier. It'll be interesting the, the emotions that you'll feel when you start doing that. Such simple changes too. Nothing, nothing too dramatic. Um, these are just small things to bring to try to feel better in your clothes. And the other thing that I like that you called out, and especially with the pictures, is that um, we all have. While we might fit into one of the categories that you described, we all have different sizes and shapes to our body and that diversity is important um, and is a part of of being human that we're not going to be exactly the same so we, sh we shouldn't be comparing to what other people are doing we should really be looking at what looks and feels best for our, right. our own selves right and it goes back to those stories because i clients will say to me oh but look how big my this looks and I said, I don't see that. I see how beautiful this color looks on you mm -hmm. and how your face is highlighted and how it hugs your curves. Uh, I think you look beautiful. And it's, it's the language we have in our head. All of a sudden they're like, oh, I look beautiful. I don't look big. And when you start using different words to how when you look at yourself and start seeing yourself differently um, be, and start seeing yourself through other people's eyes sometimes. Like, listen to what people are telling you. Sometimes we're, um, there's bad and good, but sometimes that, that good messaging, we're so like, oh no, I don't look this good, or oh no, you know, it's like, no, really take a moment and see what they see. Mm -hmm. And it really does start to allow you to wear things that you want to wear, but you're mm -hmm. afraid to wear. Yeah, that's another thing too. Um, as women, we it's hard for us to accept compliments when someone tells us we look good. It's that's that natural instinct to say, "Oh no, 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 I don't look that great." Um, we have to play it down when we deserve to highlight those things and to celebrate um, how we look and feel. Yes, for sure. Um, I do want to just talk. Can I go through these real quick? I'm yes, talking about exactly. color because I know color is a thing uh, I was one of my clients who was in her 80s was dressing in tan black and gray and she really was dress, dressing to disappear and I would bet that there's a lot of women in midlife that they start to do this gray is an easy color to throw on um, I know I was dressing in gray a lot in black I thought oh black is so chic well you, you do start to disappear and all of a sudden I started introducing yellow and orange and into her wardrobe and it was this huge catalyst for her that she started, she joined Mahjong and she started going to church and she started, you know, thinking about traveling. It was just this feeling better about yourself. Um, so I just have some visuals that I think are pretty impactful that I wanted to share. Yes. Um, wow. And you can see, and this is another thing to think about trends. A lot of times we'll look at trends and say, oh, I couldn't wear that. Well, maybe you couldn't wear that exactly, but how can you incorporate that trend into your wardrobe? Um, a great place to go on Pinterest or go on Instagram and start following people, get inspired, copy people. Um, I think these gals all look great. You can see this gal on the left uh, with modern and accessories can make a huge difference. The Converse tennis shoe, the mm. modern sunglasses, I was, ran into a gal one time and she was getting her hair cut, beautiful gray hair. And she was beautiful, but we got to, we were leaving and she threw on this jean jacket and these tortoise shell glasses. And she went from a 70 year old woman to this modern chic um, woman moving out into the world. So I, I think the accessories can really make a difference. And again, owning, starting to own color and print. And it, it's a slow process. It's baby steps, like we talked about before. It may be wearing color bracelets. It may be wearing a color shoe. It may be having a color bag. And then it's one day you think, oh, I wanna wear a color shirt. And this gradual change starts happening. Mm. So you can see all these women are probably 60s, 70s, 80s. And again, redefining what 60, 70, 80 looks like. 
this gal in the middle is in her 70s, modern jeans, mm -hmm. modern shoes. There's no reason that you can't be wearing these things. A lot of times it's just the imagery we're given mm -hmm. doesn't give us that possibility. It gives us the limitation of what we are. Um, yeah, that color piece, I think, um, like you mentioned, is it's so important to just bringing, helping people move from fading away or, or hiding um, and as, and then helping them to really take a step back in and feeling comfortable in doing that. And that's the, this idea around being, becoming invisible with aging and women see, sinking into that. Um, you've mentioned that a couple of times. Um, how do you, do you have any other suggestions in terms of how to help women make that transition to standing out and feeling confident in doing that? Um, you mentioned doing it slowly. Anything else that you find as strategies that work for your clients? Um, one of the things I found in midlife is there are times that your friends group, maybe it's friends that you've been with since your kids were in kindergarten, and you may be wanting to do something different and you may be wanting to, maybe you want to start a business. Maybe you make cookies and you've always thought about doing a business, but you're surrounded by these friends that have known you a certain way mm -hmm. and don't allow you to think about, again about the possibilities of what you can do. And it's, I think midlife is this very powerful time in women's life mm -hmm. that sometimes gets overshadowed by the voices, the stories, the um, friends in our ears. A client of mine who's in her seventies is starting a business and her friends have said, why don't you just relax, retire, read a book, go on a trip. So sometimes it may be finding a new, not a total new friend group, but finding groups. There's many groups that I'm part of that I encourage women to join. Revel is one of them that um, is a group for over 50 women, women over 50, and just exposing yourself to new things and new ways of thinking. Um, it, it takes some effort to uh, look into new opportunities. I think looking at Pinterest, looking at Instagram, following people, trying new things. Yeah, no, that's it. And I like how you're also mentioning, it's not just about the clothes. It is more about you feeling comfortable. Clothing is a piece of that and then maybe trying new clothes and, and learning what that looks like for you now, but also taking this opportunity of midlife to examine what it is, what is it that you want um, for now and the rest of your life. Uh, a lot of women I talk to do say that they want the next 30 years to be some of the best, their best 30 years. And what does that look like? And you really, the sky's the limit, but we yeah. have to turn down those stories that create limits or um, create barriers to reaching what we ultimately want. Yeah, I do wanna share with you just, I'm gonna go back to this. Um, let me get back and share. You can't see my screen right now, can you? Not yet, nope. Okay. Um, I just wanna show you some imagery. I think that this is one of the most powerful. Let me get back to you, sorry. Share screen. Um, now you can see my screen, right? No, not yet. Now, now we can. Okay. So this goes back to my what we were talking about, the visions we have in our head the, the, of what certain ages look like. So Iris Appel is this very famous, um, Appel, I spelled her name wrong. Sorry about that, Iris. She's fantastic. Now she's over the top as far as style. She wears big and chunky and colorful, but she isn't defined by her age. She has become a spokesperson for a number of different um, lines. So again, redefining what we think certain ages look like. What I can wear at 50, what I can wear at 60, what I can do at 70. Can I start running at 70? Can I open a business at 70? It's getting new visuals and new stories. Mm -hmm. This gal, you may know Ida, Ida Keeling. She's a runner. Okay. Um, but 103 uh, mm -hmm. and still competing. Um, and look at her in this leather jumpsuit. Mm -hmm. you know, um, Lynn Slater, this is a great gal if people want to follow somebody. She's 66. She's a Princeton, 
professor and she was discovered at Fashion Week in New York and now she's a model and still a professor, but she definitely um, pushes the edge as far as dressing modern. And you can see, you know, she threw on a Converse tenny. Like most people in their 60s would say, I can't wear a Converse tenny. It's like, well, why can't you? Look how great she looks. So it's again, redefining um, and letting go of what certain ages look like. This gal, Senior Style Bible is another great gal to follow, Dory Jacobson. She's 86 and she's lives in Vegas. She's a former Playboy boy, uh, bunny, but she's dresses incredibly. And, and I was always doing photo shoots. And so she's a great person to follow. This gal is out of Britain, Betty. And she, so this is just an example of, this is the imagery that we're given on the right of the 20, 30 year old in the dress. So we look at, this is from Bowdoin. Um, we look at this dress and we say, oh, well, she's tall, she's thin, of course she can wear this. Now, if you saw this, the same, exact same dress on Betty, who's 88, she looks fantastic. Mm -hmm. So my, with Celebrate the Gray, what I'm trying to do is get, get brands to start showing these pictures because if we mm -hmm. saw these pictures, we would start to think about aging differently and we would shop differently and we would wear our clothes differently. Yeah. Um, and we all know Allie McGraw, she's 81. She's from Love Story. If you, you may be, Stacey, you may be too young, but <laughs> I mean, again, look at red glasses, modern jewelry, what a difference it makes. So it may not, if you're not comfortable in maybe um, the clothes part, the jewelry accessories can mm -hmm. really make a difference too. Carolyn, Dolan, she's 73. Again, she's a model. She's, I represent over 30 gray haired models. She's one of my models. Um, the, the modern glasses, she always wears color. She's a huge proponent of color. What a difference it makes. Yes. Yeah, just s simple things. And I like your point too on the accessory, accessories. Uh, the jewelry can also make a big difference. Yes. Um, a couple of questions that have come in that, or topics. One comment was about um, about finding things that are comfortable. So uh -huh. what, where, how, what are your recommendations on that? Especially, I know when it comes to shoes, I have um, some women that I work with that are, you know, they used to wear the stiletto heels and now yeah. they're like, I can't do that anymore. Um, how do you find fashion, how do you balance the fashion and comfort? So I have to say shoes have come a long way and comfort and style actually equal to each other now. It used to not, mm -hmm. um, but Clark's makes great shoes. Sorel makes great shoes. Mm -hmm. um, you know, introducing a nice clean white tenny. This is a trend that I um, would encourage everyone to kind of introduce some fun tennis shoes. Colorful tennis shoes is a great way to introduce. Another thing I would go to Zappos or any of the online stores where you can order boxes of shoes. There's no shipping charge to or from, so you can ship them back and try them on in your comfort of your own home. Um, and you can search by comfort and look at the shoes and try them on with clothes. It, you know, they may feel great and look great, but then you put them on with a dress and it's like, oh, they don't look as great as I thought they did. Mm -hmm. And shoes can make a huge difference. Um, they can either make you look matronly or they can really make you look more modern. So I would go back to Pinterest and I would go back to looking at Instagram, what people are wearing. Mm -hmm. um, other comfort shoes, cork, corkies are another great shoe that I wear a lot that have a cork insole. Um, and I know a lot of people need arches. So you can search in Zappos and do that. I don't have a list off the top of my head, but I'm happy if somebody wants to reach out to me, I'll do more research on that. That's okay. Um, and if you, um, what we can do afterwards when we send out the recording, we can provide some resources. So if there are things that you want to follow up with, we're happy to send those out. Okay. Yeah, that's great. Um, talking about comfort, or are there other questions, but I do want to get into some of the clothes I have behind me too. Yeah, go for it. Um, yes, I think the other question about comfort, even with clothes, how do, how, can we make sure that these stylish, really fun clothes that may look really great on us also are comfortable and functional for our lifestyle? Right. 
And so fabrication is going to be super important, especially menopause when you're in the midst of menopause is fabrics that are moisture wicking mm -hmm. and many, many people are doing it. Um, I'm just going to highlight Athleta because I think Athleta does a super good job on modern styling, great fabrics and dresses, pieces that you can dress up or dress down. Okay. So you can travel with them or you can be at work and you could throw on a jacket with um, some of their city pants and all of a sudden you're dressed up. So a couple of pieces, I'm gonna stand up and see how we do this. Like when we talk about layering, um, these are both athleta pieces and they're made of moisture wick, wick, wicking fabric. They also have ruching, you can see, which is a gal's best friend. You can wear a bra with this. Um, and it's a great piece to wear, say you just want to wear it underneath a shirt. This comes in probably 15 different colors. And they do a bunch of different, and they also do like camo, but you could wear that under with a white mm. or a dark wash jean. Oh, wow. Um, and a dark wash jean is a great investment. And I'll tell you about some brands down the road when we get to that. Um, and then this one, I'm a huge lover of orange and red. But again, you'll see the ruching. This is a great piece to throw in your bag. It's moisture wicking. So say it's cool, you can throw that on. Oh, I've got a hot flash, I gotta take it off. This is gonna be dry. It's gonna stay, it, it'll be a little moist, but then it will dry super quickly. Mm -hmm. So it's a great piece. It comes in a bunch of different colors. It also comes in a bunch of different necklines. It comes in a short sleeve or a long sleeve. So it's a really practical piece. Also, I use these kind of pieces a lot to throw on over a dress, oh, okay. make it into a skirt all of a sudden. Right, versatility. So versatility, that's the other thing that I'm a huge proponent of, looking at your wardrobe and looking, how can I extend my wardrobe? Um, you know, this dress, I'm, a number of times I've unbuttoned, put on a tank top and my jeans and worn it like a duster. Oh, wow, okay. So on my website, Celebrate the Gray, I have a lot of um, ideas of how to do that because I, I really believe you don't need to have a huge wardrobe. Mm -hmm. It's learning, one, to dress your shape, you know, what's your lifestyle, do your clothes fit in your lifestyle, and then extending your wardrobe. How do I extend my wardrobe? Um, you know, using a little jean shirt as a cover-up when you're going through hot flashes. Mm -hmm. You can cover it up over a dress and make it into a jacket. And then just to talk more, this is another athletic piece. A lot, and Title IX does this, and Nike does this. With this moisture wicking fabrics, they also have built-in bras. Oh, okay, so yep. Taking that piece off, if you're not, you know, you don't need that extra support is a huge, makes a huge difference when you're going through menopause hot flashes. Mm -hmm. um, this also has pockets. It's all moisture wicking fabric. It's got a really fun back to oh, wow. it. Um, and then another brand that I love is Uniglo. And they, it's U-N-I-G-L-O. U-N-I-G-L-O. <laughs> and they, this is, they have great um, silhouettes. Mm -hmm. They're modern, they're simple, they're good fabrics, they're reasonably priced. And this is great, it opens up. It's got a defined waistline. It's got pockets. And it's also got a little bit of, um, it's cotton. So you, you know, natural fabrics are always best, but it's also got a little bit of spandex in it or a little bit of wick, wicking, moisture wicking. Excellent. So, you know, this can easily be changed up by just throwing on this great little yellow sweater. Oh, wow. Much, yeah. much more approachable, mm -hmm. right? Doesn't it, it's like a spring day. Or, you know, a jean jacket is always a great addition. It's not, let me do the white one because the white one looks better. You know. 
Okay. Yeah, lots of different options. And that, um, we did get a question here, taking into consideration of finances, what are priorities when revamping a wardrobe? Um, this woman is 50 and wants to make an overhaul. But again, it, uh, overhauling a whole wardrobe can be expensive. It sounds like having a few key items might be a way to keep the cost down. Yes. Um, it, you know, it depends, and I'm happy to chat with whoever that person is. Mm -hmm. um, it depends on where your holes are in your wardrobe, because some things need to be investment pieces. Mm -hmm. But some things, like summer dresses, for example. I bought this at Goodwill. It's a Bowdoin dress. Oh, wow. Um, again, it's, it's all the great principles. It, it's cotton. Um, v, it's got this little wrap, and it was $9.99. So I'm a huge um believer in thrift store shopping mm -hmm. and consignment shopping and goodwill shopping i've bought some amazing pieces i bought an eileen fisher dress at goodwill for 9.99 so yeah. don't go to goodwill until you understand your shape mm -hmm. your lifestyle and what do you need because you'll end up buying a lot of things you don't really need <laughs> but that's a great way it's also if you have a local consignment store get to know the owner mm -hmm. and she'll look out for you you know she wants to come in um the other thing that i'm a well, i love um target i love tj maxx i love marshall's this is a great piece for gals that maybe um have a bigger belly that wants to kind of conceal it's a flat front it's mm -hmm. stretch they're just pull on. So they're like a yoga style, but they're much more stylish. Okay. Um, you know, I think they're 20, they were $25. Wow. Um, flat front really makes a difference when you're trying to conceal, seal a belly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, definitely shopping there. Again, it comes back to understanding your body so that you can make good use of what you're finding. That's such a good point. Yeah. And and I have had um, clients who are in larger bodies tell me that the they notice the quality of the clothing goes down when they're in larger sizes. Um, is that something that you've noticed or is that just particular companies? Um, I would say it's probably particular companies. Another great store is Universal Standard. It's, mm, a new, yes. it's not a store, it's a company. I don't think they have a brick and mortar. Um, but they really cater to all sizes. Mm -hmm. And I would definitely encourage gals to check them out. They also do this wonderful five piece collection. So it's a couple of shirts, it's a dress, it's a jacket. And they're just, with those five pieces, it's a great investment um, mm -hmm. to modernizing your look. Excellent. Yeah, I am familiar with Universal Standard and their quality is great. And they also have an option where you can choose um, if you go up or down a size in a year, they will they will replace the piece. Oh, I didn't know that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So that's another option, too, of just recognizing that women's bodies change and that is normal. <laughs> so. Right. And jeans, like on Universal Standard, good pricing, huge array of sizes. Mm -hmm. Um, getting a dark wash jean into your wardrobe will modernize a straight leg. Straight leg works with pretty much everybody. You know, skinny leg jeans are hard for most women to wear, especially as we age. And then a mid-rise or a high-rise jean uh, as we age and we start to get a belly is, perfect, you know, is what you should be looking for, too. Um, you know, the other thing, too, just quickly, because this is a piece I bought at um, Marshall's, I think. And this jacket mm -hmm. you can put on with a white t-shirt and a dark wash jean and tennis shoes. And I will tell you, people will stop you and I, where'd you get that jacket? Oh my gosh, that jacket, it comes in all colors. I think it was $29 or something. Mm -hmm. um, but you can inject some color and not spend a ton of money. Yeah. Um, That's I, I don't encourage people to spend a ton of money on lower end clothes just mm -hmm. because of the, um, where we are with climate change and everything but that mm -hmm. if you can go to thrift stores and, and buy some of your pieces there too, or consignment, that's a great place or, um, buy some basic, uh, pants or jeans that are more investment. And then you can, um, inject the color maybe, from Marshalls or TJ Maxx or a consignment store or 
uh, Uniglow or a Universal Standard. Excellent. Well, these are all great um, resources and recommendations, Stephanie, to get people started. Um, as we finish up here, do you have any final thoughts for women dressing during menopause um, and what they should be looking for, how they can start changing those conversations um, that they're telling themselves to something that's more positive and encouraging for them to embrace this time of life? Um, well, the biggest thing I always say to people is start small. And those little small steps really add up. Um, it may be like we talked about a shoe or a fun shoe. Like I had one client that bought this really great pair of loafers and she said, oh, they're so, they're not me. And, and I said, just wear them and just see how it goes. And every time she wore them, someone would say, oh, I love your shoes. Where did you get those shoes? Then it becomes more, you're more comfortable and you become more confident in, and then it becomes this catalyst to take a risk further down the road. So, and don't get caught up in, so take, take a risk, but if it's small, don't worry that it's small. And then also don't get caught up in, I say to people, if you didn't know what age you were, would you dress differently? Would you act differently? Would you do things differently? So if you can start letting go of age as you're determining what you can and can't wear, mm -hmm. uh, I'm not saying wearing mini skirts and, you know, <laughs> cut off crop tops, but um, I think that we get caught up in, I can't wear that because I'm 50, because I'm 60. Mm -hmm. um, start wearing some things and see what, you know, see how you feel. And also the V and the waist. So small steps, mm -hmm. um, don't get caught up in your age. Well, actually four things, um, color, wear color. Mm -hmm and the V and the waist. Those okay. are kind of four good starting points, I think. Some great. But I think everybody is beautiful and we get, we get so caught up in the things we don't like about our bodies and forget to look at the things we are so beautiful about our bodies. And I always say, oh my gosh, we have the privilege of being here and getting older. Let's mm -hmm. celebrate it. Excellent. Well, this is great. And Stephanie, if any of our listeners want to get in touch with you, we'll definitely include um, your website in the follow-up. Um, is that the best way to reach out if they have questions and to learn more about what you do? Yes. Um, I'm Celebrate the Gray, gray with an A, um, and it's celebratethegray at gmail.com. And, and I do styling. I work with companies to use real faces and authentic stories about positive aging. And I also represent gray-haired models. I have over 30 gray-haired models. So if there's anyone out there that wants to model and inspire other women, please reach out to me. Um, you know, the, the women that I represent are every age, every size, every shape, every, every race. So uh, I would love to have more ladies. Excellent. Well, great start. And thank you for the work you're doing, especially in changing that conversation. There were some comments um, that were in the chat about just appreciating that you're doing that. And the reality that if women do see more um, things that resemble themselves, women that resemble themselves, they're going to buy more. So it really works out for everybody um, in, that, in that way as well. Yes. Well, I so appreciate the time today and uh, I look forward to talking to anybody that wants to talk and I'm always available. So thank you for your time today. Excellent. Well, thank you, um, Stephanie, and thank you to all of our participants and viewers. Um, for our next webinar, it's going to be next Wednesday at 1 p.m. Uh, Pacific. It will be 4 p.m. Eastern time, and we'll be talking to Dr. Erica Lavella again, bringing her back to talk about the microbiome specifically related to menopause and changes that happen with the microbiome, what some of the current research says, um, and so discussing more on gut health. So a little bit of a change from today topic. Um, oh, we, well, exactly. Lots of variety in this <laughs> webinar. So thank you very much for joining um, and have a great rest of your day, everyone. Thank you.